Hi everyone, this is Debbie and I'm going to show you today how to make the jigsaw puzzle pieces to use in your mystery reveal activities. So this is the first step where you're going to actually make your pictures um, and cut them into puzzle pieces, sort of. So I want to show you all of that and I have up on the screen for you um, the document where you can find all of the templates. So I will share this in the comments on this video so that you can find it easily. And if you click through the slideshow, um, you can see all of the templates for the different puzzle pieces. There's different ones, different shapes. Um, if your picture is more landscape view, then you wanna use one of these, depending on how many questions you want your um, activity to be. Uh, square puzzles work out nicely if you want a smaller number of pieces. Um, if your picture is square, if it's not and you put it in there, it's going to kind of smash and distort the picture. If your portrait picture is more portrait view, then you would want to use one of these templates. And that's actually what I'm going to do today. I'm going to do a 12 piece so that you can see what I need to do. When you click on the template, it takes you to a forced copy. So you have to make a copy of the template. Once you do that, you're not hurting the original. This is your own and you can do whatever you need to with it. The templates actually come with instructions. So it says at the top here to use this template, find a picture that you want to use, you know, et cetera. So it's there if you forget what to do, the instructions are here. So you have to insert your picture as the background on all of these slides. If you click on this first slide, you are selecting the shape that is on this slide, this green shape. And when you are selecting a shape or text or something like that, you don't have an option to change the background. You have to click off of it somewhere and then you'll see the background button appear. So we're gonna click on that background and we want to choose an image. So you should have your image somewhere where you can find it. And mine is on my desktop, hopefully. There we go. I have this adorable picture of my coworkers' dogs. There's a young one and an older one. Um, okay, after you've selected the image, it brings you right back here. And besides choosing the image, you also want to click on add to theme. This will put your image on every single slide. Okay, and then you can click done. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom here so you can see what the image is. See those adorable little puppies? Well, one's a puppy, one's the, the older one. Um, and looking out at the snow, that's what it looked like here about a week ago. So back to the beginning. Um, you would probably want to delete these words if you want to use this image as your first uh, picture. You can see in the second one that there is just one picture, one square, one puzzle piece cut out. So it appears that you've just put one puzzle piece down. In the next one, it shows that you've put two puzzle pieces down. But really what you're doing is the reverse. You're hiding what is there and just making it appear as if you are laying down puzzle pieces. So your picture is not actually cut. It is just underneath these overlays that are puzzle pieces. And as you go through, one puzzle piece is added each time. So we've got our picture, we've cut it into pieces, and now we have to get it into a way that we can use it. So there's two options here. You can click on each slide, click on file, and then download as a JPEG or a PNG. And you would need to do that for every slide. So you'd click on this one, download, click on this one, file, download, image. Okay, you could do that over and over again. Or I found a little bit of a shortcut and that is to click on file, download as a PDF. So that's just one click and we've got all 12 slides or 13 slides, I believe, with the blank first one. And it's in one file. So you would want to then open a new window in your browser and go to the website pdf to jpeg.net. See it up here, pdf to jpeg, jpg.net. And this is a free converter. You don't have to sign in. You don't have to give it any permissions to access anything. You just choose a file and ours was in our downloads here. 
All right, this is the one that we just downloaded. And it's in here now. We just have to cl click on Convert PF PDF to JPEG. And it will convert all of them right here, page 1 up through page 12. 13, I guess. You can click on each of these to download them individually, or you can download all of them as a zip file. I do that just because it's simpler and quicker to me. When you have a zip file, you have to have some way to extract those pictures. It's very simple. You click on this extract button. And what I like about this now is that I can tell this where I want it to go. It's set. My computer just automatically puts it in a download folder, but I really want to put it somewhere more convenient where I can find it again. So I would tell it where I want it to go, um, the exact folder, and maybe make a new one to label it for, for doggy picture or whatever you'd like, and then hit on extract. And now each of my slides is an individual picture. Okay, so now you have your puzzle pieces and you are ready to do the next activity, which is done in Google Sheets with a different template. So I'm going to stop this video now, let you do all of this, and then when you're ready to start the next phase, you can try the next video. So all of these links, everything is in the comments for our YouTube channel. Um, check out there, and if you have questions, uh, stop by our Facebook group. Thanks, and have a great day.